Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at Anymoon.com's review of Bandai's Little Draken Plus Missile Pod Accessory for the Bandai DX SV262H Keith Arrow Custom. This accessory was a Tamashi website exclusive released in August 2017 for 8,424 yen. That's inclusive of tax and shipping to a Japanese domestic residence. There's a brown shipper box. Inside that shipper box you will find a blue and white two-tone flimsy nothing to write home about box which has a plastic clamshell inside. Inside that clamshell you will find two display stands including their arms and bases. There's the two little Draken toys. There's a shield, a sword, and two sets of missile pods for each leg. That's a total of four missile pods. There's a top and bottom for each leg. Underneath that tray you will find a plastic baggie taped uh, to the bottom side. Inside that plastic baggie you will find display stand adapters for the little Drakens. There is fighter mode versions, or actually detached versions I should say. There are Gearwalk claws, and then there are little wing stoppers, which I will discuss at length momentarily. Beyond that there's also a set of instructions. We're going to begin this review by taking a closer look at the Lil Drakens themselves. Now you can see here I've got the display stand. It's got a very long arm which can make things a little bit funky for you uh, when using the display stand with the just Lil Drakens by themselves. Here is the display stand adapter. Now it's connecting to the same place that the toy will connect to the fighter mode SV262, I guess any mode really, but it's connecting via this display stand adapter that was in a separate plastic bag. Now a durability issue right off the bat. Now it does lock on pretty securely, but this plastic ring that goes on this peg right here will crack most likely the first time you put it on. It doesn't really affect anything, but obviously that's not ideal. Now the toy itself, pretty nicely detailed, clear sensors, nice paint apps throughout, good detail work with vents, there's also some engine detail. It's probably going to be impossible to see way deep in there. No articulation back here. The wings do extend out and come all the way down or all the way up. Now, you one little thing I, I wasn't too thrilled with is there's no spot that tells you you've got the wing in the proper angle. I would have liked to have seen that and make it less likely to knock it out of the proper angle during handling. So there's obviously some integrated landing gear, as you could see over there. To activate or to use those landing gears, you're just going to pry a finger in, pull open the doors. Now the front landing gear does have nice hinges that extend outward so that they can lie flush when you're not using them. So we'll go ahead and pull this landing gear out. Now it is a metal bar with a rubber wheel that spins. It does also lock forward. Turning our attention to the rear landing gear, we'll pop open the door. Again, fish a fingernail in there, pull out the landing gear. Now this one you can see has a tire that needs to rotate. Still a metal bar, still a rubber wheel, no longer a locking forward mechanism, which is a bit of a bummer because you have this door here and you would think you could just close that door if they put a little notch in it, that would have locked it forward. But they didn't do that, so you will not be able to do that. All right, so there you go. Now there, all the landing gear out. Now if the toy was sitting flat on the ground, there's plenty of clearance also. So nice functionality with the integrated landing gear. Could have been a little bit better, uh, but overall good enough for my purposes. Okay, now we're going to talk missile pods. The missile pods obviously follow the same paint scheme as the toy. It has blue with nice gold detail along the edges. There is a silver piece in the front that you can slide forward. Once you've done that, you can imagine the missiles just kind of firing out on their own. Or you could pop a toothpick in, and we can open up this door here. Now obviously you don't need a toothpick, but you will find it makes things a little bit easier if you've got one around. Once you've got everything opened up, you can see there's the nice gray paint inside. The individual missiles all have white tips. It's also very nice. A little bit of a dark paint wash probably could have helped the missiles look more individual. Uh, but overall, nice panel work, nice detailing. Everything looks pretty decent in there. There is also, it might be impossible to see, a little emblem to the front. If it's just a triangle, that's going to sit on top of your SV-262 toy. If there's a triangle with a line underneath of it, that is going to sit underneath. Now, it's important to note that because these things look very, 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 very similar to each other. So here's the other one. Let's open it up. Pop this in there and see if you can see it. 
On this one, we have a triangle and a line down here, which again, might not be able to see it, but that tells you that that goes on the bottom of the craft. So we can go ahead, take our SV-262 toy, and you're just going to, there is a little clip in the back and a peg in the front. And all you do, apparently I got the wrong side there, is you place a little pressure going back. Let's get that closed up. And it should just pop right into place like so. Take the other one here for the bottom. Just a little bit of pressure and a little pressure on the front and it locks right into place. No problem. Going on this side, same thing. Fingers might be a little slick. All right, so a little pressure back, a little pressure forward. There it goes, once again. So, once you've got all of your missiles in, it's going to be, there we go. Oh, so this one's a little finicky on me. There it goes. Uh, you can see it really does conform well to the visual look of the existing toy. Just adds a little bit of thickness uh, and I'd say overall, very attractive, actually beefs up the already mean looking fighter mode. So big plus there for me. So the little Drakens on their own are pretty cool. You can have fun playing with them and put them on the display stand to make pretty aggressive looking displays. But one of the other bonuses is that they actually attach to the Draken 3 toy. Now to accomplish this, we're gonna have to take our wing and pull it out. Extend that hinge there and then fold it over and get it nice and vertical. Once that's happened, we could take our little drock in. We can bring up the fins, however you want to do it, uh, and then plug them into the hard point. Now, the good news about that hard point is it's right at the hinge, so it's not creating a ton of weight to make this wing droop, uh, but there is a little bit, so that's a bit of a problem. Also, they rotate on there. So you might not get it perfectly angled with the other little Draken. There's no little tooth that tells you it's in exactly the right spot, which I thought was a little bit of a bummer in fighter mode. So those are a couple issues. Now, one perceived issue that Bandai had was that this wing might want to twist in either direction now that that peg has been removed. So what they've done for us there is provided these wing locks. So they separate into two different pieces. There is the top piece, which actually pegs into that hole we have vacated on the leg. So we're just gonna reach in there and might have just popped free one of my missile pods, but get that in. Oops, we want that to be above the wing. So easier without lights and a camera, of course. Okay, so that's in place now, which is good. Popped off my missile part, which is bad, but okay, there we go. So. That's in place. This can no longer twist upward. Flipping the toy over, we grab our bottom piece. We have to angle this out a little bit here, kind of fish it in, because what we want to do is get the front of this piece over here. There we go. And then we're gonna just tooth it together. And now there's no way that this piece can rotate. Now a little QC issue my wing seems to be kind of splitting apart right there, which obviously is no good, but I'm sure a little bit of glue could have fixed that. All right, so the wing lock is in place. That wing cannot rotate, but it can still droop out to about there. So maybe that's the perfect angle to have a Draken, a little Draken attached. But there you go. So that's what it would look like. If you want to go full vertical, still an option. Uh, we can do it on the other side so you can get the full effect here. And now I'm going to do it on this side without the wing lock in place just to show you that there is no issue on my toy not using that wing lock. So you get the part for long term, it's probably good to have. But for the short term, I didn't find any particular need. Uh, maybe it's drooping a little bit, hard to say but it looks pretty good and it seems to function without the wing lock. So that I was relieved to see. Now on the bummer side, if we 
get to these landing gear and pull them out, things are not going to work out so well for us. So let's bring out the landing gear. Let's bring out the rear landing gear also. Now there you can see the one that doesn't have the lock on is fidgeting. Here I've got a toothpick handy still. So we bring that out, extend it all the way. Now there's obviously a problem with your little drakken popping off the hard point. It does not fit quite as securely as I would like. Sure, I'm bobbing it a little bit as I handle it, but still. Shouldn't have been enough to fall off there, so we'll put that back on. Okay, so now we've got the landing gear out. I'm gonna put the toy down, and sadly, it is going to sit right on top of those little drakken. So, I don't know that in theory or practice you would ever have little drakens on with the landing gear out. But uh, it would have been cool if it could have pulled it off. And I'm told the 172 scale kits can because they could fold the wings over more. So definitely a bummer in that regard. But again, I would suspect you'd be using a display stand whenever you have the little drakens attached. So how much of a bummer is pretty much up to you. Here we have gear walk mode. I've got the display stands. I've got the little claws at the tops of the display stands. I'm holding up the weight of the little drakens. Um, this is not a review of the underlying SV262 toy. This is not a transformation guide. I do have those videos separately. Gear walk mode with the display stand adapter for the SV262 is very tricky. That display stand adapter doesn't seem to work nearly as well as it does for the other two modes. So I've got a little bit of a balancing act. Plus I'm now supporting extra weight on top. So it's definitely not an ideal situation. If I remove these supports the toy can still have those little drakens on top but you can see they're obviously pushing a lot of weight down on the toy i've got one droopy wing there we go so now we got those wings kind of on the same level it'll work for a photo shoot i'm not sure how well it's going to work in the long term now one thing i can also do in gear walk mode is show you the shield which now one solid piece very attractive the old shield is obviously was the wing, the fin, the spoiler, the tail fin, the vertical stabilizer. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, now doesn't need to transform, doesn't have the big hinges in the middle, much more attractive. And beyond that, much more enjoyable to handle. This would just pop apart constantly on you. It was very frustrating. Now, part of the bummer of this accessory kit is there's no good reason that that wasn't included with the original toy. It really should have been. And if you've seen my SV262 review, you know that that was something that annoyed me uh, in just handling the toy. So that would have been something people could have used uh, and enjoyed their SV262 more. So I think Bandai kind of shot themselves in the foot by holding that back for an accessory. So, gear walk mode, the weight of the little Drakens. You might say, hey, it looks attractive uh, and it works but it, I don't know how well it's going to work in the long term. Uh, if I handle this toy right now, these wings are going to spin on me. Uh, they're definitely drooping. So uh, cool that it does it, but I'm not sure how feasible it is over a long term. Let's go ahead and continue on to Batroid. Here's a quick comparison picture, and you can see that the Missile pods on the legs really do add quite a bit of beefiness in Batroid mode. So the missile pods continuing to be a strong positive for this set. Turning our attention to the little Drakens attached in Batroid mode. Uh, this is what it looks like from the back. Now obviously you can pull the, pit, the wings in and then bring the Drakens together a little closer. Uh, but this is how it would look like with their wings extended. Uh, they're not attached particularly firmly. You can see there's a huge amount of weight now on the back of the toy, although credit to its hips and joints, it's holding everything up fine. 
Uh, there is the twist point on the little drawkin and the twist point on the wing. So this could be frustrating to handle. The good news in Batroid mode is you've got your little display stands that can support things. And in Batroid mode, those display stands will be nicely tucked behind the toy itself. So it won't be the big visual impediment it would be otherwise. You can see from the front, the little drawkins look like... Um, Almost like the shoulder super parts for a VF-19 toy from Macross 7. Um, or maybe the booster parts on some other fast packs. Uh, they're not going to handle well again. They can pop right out pretty easily. Uh, I can't think of too many reasons why a Batroid mode SV-262 would have little drakens still attached to it. So, your mileage may vary. I'm not terribly impressed with them connected in Batroid mode. But again, you could definitely set them up on the display stands and have them being solo flying vehicles with the Batroid and the missile parts all looking pretty good. Okay, now we are ready to talk about the sword, which is nicely detailed. See there. The bummer of the sword is that it doesn't feature any sort of collapsing or extension gimmick. So it's pretty bland. It's just a piece of plastic. Now in the show, it extends when Keith pulls it out of his missile pod. There's no missile pod receptacle and there's no extension gimmick. So just know that going into this, it's not quite as fancy as you might have hoped. Uh, and at this price range, you would hope that uh, maybe it does have some of that gimmick tree. It does not. You can use the articulated hand to hold it, but the articulated hand doesn't have a thumb that really curls around. The thumb on the articulated hand just goes downward. So when you put the sword in there, it is pinched, but it isn't particularly good. It's gonna wobble around on you. So the far better option is to grab your hand, your fixed posed hand that also holds the gun and just feed it in there. And it's a very tight fit. Once you've got it on, the toy handles beautifully. You can go ahead and do your slashing moves uh, and it's gonna add a lot of fun factor. So that's all really good to see. And the hilt is long enough that you could do a two-hole, two-hand grab of the sword, which can look pretty impressive. As I mentioned before, you could fit the sword in both hands simultaneously to get kind of an overhead chop, which is pretty cool. So, final thoughts here. The shield absolutely should have been included with the toy. Very nice to have. Makes handling the toy a whole lot more enjoyable. The sword actually adds to the fun factor quite a bit, though it's a bummer it can't collapse and then stow into one of the leg compartments like we see in the show. The missile pods on the legs, huge plus. Again, would have been great to see them come with the original toy, but getting them here is nice. Uh, they do add to the fun factor. They do add to the beefiness of the menacing SV-262 look, so all very nice. The little drakens themselves, uh, pretty cool. They do spice up some displays just by being there. Uh, kind of like the ghosts did for Luca's RVF-25. So I enjoy these guys too. So overall, you know, it's, it's kind of like the SV-262 toy. These are fun. Uh, they're interesting, but they are flawed in a lot of ways. So Having seen the review, hopefully now you know if this is the sort of thing that would appeal to you and how much money you would be willing to spend on it. Uh, for a lot of people, it's going to be better to spend their money somewhere else given the variety of shortcomings that have popped up throughout this review and the review of the SV-262. Check out my full article on anymoon.com and as always, thanks for watching.